Mushoku Tensei is easily one of the most, if not the most, beloved and hated anime franchises of all time. It's hard to go a week of its airing without seeing some sort of argument about moral choices, Rudeus' horrible nature, or how revolutionary and daring its storytelling is. Rudeus' journey has never been a pretty one, opening up as a disgusting reject of a society and growing into what we see now, a father, a husband, and more importantly, a son. Whether you believe Mushoku Tensei is a 10 out of 10 franchise or something that shouldn't exist, I myself believe that Mushoku Tensei is perfect because people hate it so much. Because people can't stop arguing about it. Because it makes you confront difficult subjects. Because it makes you think. Too much entertainment is just that. Entertainment. Turn off your brain. Watch an explosion. Watch the self-insert impress the crowd with his OP magic. But Rudeus is different. He's a character. He's a person. And just like us, he's full of flaws and stains. Whether people want to accept it or not, that's what makes him feel real. His struggles, while messy at times, are a foundation for what I feel is its biggest achievement, relatability and regrets. It's easy to relate to the harem protagonist number 5064. There's nothing about them to conflict with your own personal belief because they lack beliefs. But Rudeus, for anyone who has gone through trauma, mistakes, been at their worst, seen the edge of a blade in their own hand, is proof that time after time, there is still hope. That even if you don't score a big win the next time you get back on your feet, the next step, maybe just the next step. Because hey, if he can do it, why the hell can't I? But additionally, for those viewing the said person, trying to take that first step, you're able to accept that drive. Because like Refugian once said, if there's someone like Rudius close to you, and that person were to have a slight change of heart and try to start over, I sincerely hope that you won't abandon them on the spot. Rudius is a culmination of bad choices, an example of missteps that can really be seen as almost a testbed to correcting one's path. You want to see what choices he makes, root for him when he's trying to claim the gold, and intrigued as he steps into an expansive world that he's surrounded by. Season two, part two brings us what I would consider some of the greatest segments of Rudius' story thus far. In earlier segments, it's Rudius settling down and becoming a husband and a father. While at first his intentions aren't the purest for having a wife and a child, shoot, there's no book or walkthrough on this side of life, but it's through his experience in loss and achieving this role that it suddenly hits him. Holding a child in his hand is different than acquiring some sort of achievement prompt. It's bringing new life into the world, taking on a role that his father once had, and shaping a future for his child. Then we have the arrival of the Grey Rat sisters, and our first glimpse into how Rius has changed and how he sees his sisters. Once a man who dabbled in Siscon and lolly stuff, he views his sisters as a responsibility for him to protect in his father's stead. Even utilizing his own experiences to aid them. For Aisha, being treated like a stain upon the family by Norn's parents, Rius accepts her as she is, a sister and nothing less. Conflicted with the choices that Lilia made for her daughter and wanting them to be equals, it's really one of the first cases that we have Rudius taking his own moral standings and wanting to press them upon the people of this world. Despite it being normal that Aisha is raised to serve Rudius and it's okay for her to be seen as the spawn of the mistress's wife, he can't accept this and rather he wants to treat them as equals. Additionally, despite being pressed multiple times, he rejects even touching Aisha which is something that he's had fantasies about in his previous life. This, while disturbing to consider, is a huge growing point for him as a person. On Norn's side, which is some of the most emotional moments, her story is a massive shock to Rudius. Being that he spent most of his previous life and this one as a shut-in, the moment she becomes locked up is devastating to him. Now, while Norn did figure out her feelings on her own, the resolution to the entire ordeal had a strong impact on Rudius himself. Seeing his sister overcome something by herself that he couldn't was encouraging. But additionally, it allowed him to accept the mistakes that he made in rejecting his brother for so long. Yes, his brother who destroyed his PC and kicked him out into the streets was the very one that tried to save his life over and over. It's both a message of accepting regrets and also just simply being at one side when they need it. We then go to Nanahoshi's meltdown. Nanahoshi has always been a very interesting character in the Mushoku Tensei story. A polar opposite to Rudeus. Seemingly a normal Japanese girl that wants to return to Japan. Reese had nothing and relishes in the idea of having this new life. While Nanahoshi finds this new world fake, rejects it, and has plenty to return to. Seeing her recent failure, Nanahoshi gives up on everything, putting her on the road to death. Everything Rhea sees in her is like looking into a mirror in his past life. Yes, somebody that no longer wants to live. Something that grabs his gut and tells him he can't let her be alone. In helping her, it's almost as if he's helping the man in that mirror, giving her a second wind in her quest to return home. That's when we get to the biggest 
stomach punch of this season, and really a culmination of everything that Rudius has experienced thus far, trekking off to Teleportation Labyrinth to help Paul and Zenith. At first, this is something that he hesitates to do, making up excuses after excuses in his own head. Still, he's ultimately pushed by Norn because unlike her, he had a choice, and simply because he has the ability to save his family. At the same time, regrets are building up inside of him. While he was playing family, his family needed him and he made his own choice to build his own life, even going so far as to acknowledging that he picked fixing his ED over saving his own mother. While he isn't quite settled that Zenith and Paul are his parents, this all changes after the events of the Teleportation Labyrinth. Losing Paul, he is faced with massive grief and a key to realization that once again, in this life, in this new life, despite saying that he'd change, he made the same mistakes again, choosing to ignore his parents as his parents. A more difficult thing to get over for a person is not just making a mistake, but making a mistake twice. This is quite easily one of the biggest growing points for Rudius thus far. Shifting from an outsider, a reincarnate, using his past memories as an advantage, to now being critically struck with a realization. There's so much in this segment that it's hard to really condense in a review. Why did Paul save Rudius, a fake son? What did his previous parents think of him? What is Paul to him? Why didn't he do more? What if he was stronger? Did he make a mistake coming there? Was Zenith even worth saving? What if they had a better plan? On and on, the what ifs. But the key thing about all of this is, Rudius was Paul's son. He acknowledges, sadly too late, but maybe not too late. Paul was his father. Paul wasn't perfect, and he's an incredible character study in himself, a dirtbag with some of the worst life choices. But in the end, he was a father and sacrificed so much to reunite his family, a dirtbag that you can root for in the end. More importantly, he paves the way for Rudius' own future as a father and realizing the importance of waking up and taking upon himself the role in his family. And yes, getting out of the dark hole to realize that he had to make one more massive mistake. Probably the biggest controversy of this season he sleeps with Roxy. Something that in the moment is tragic and unforgivable in many eyes, highlights the love that Roxy has for Rudius in saving his life, Rudius's own weakness, and thankfully, Sylphie's own love for Rudius and desire for his happiness. While many will see this as a flaw in Sylphie's character, accepting something as horrible as a cheating husband, but putting it into context of her personal stance, this is something that she's always accepted, knew it would happen, and something that she openly admitted ever since marrying Rudius. It's also an intriguing aspect, even though it's a culturally jarring aspect of the Mushoku Tensei world. It's a world where a majority of people openly accept multiple wives. But that's the cool thing, that despite that you're outside of that culture, you still almost want to judge the culture. Though it also highlights the fact that in the Mushoku Tensei world, they don't have psychiatrists, and nobody really knows how to fix somebody in such a depressed state. And the willingness for Refugian to actually get into that is intriguing. It still doesn't make Rudius' infidelity a good thing for many people, but yet it's still another step in the long life that Rudius must face, accept any consequences and hopefully make lemonade from it. But interestingly enough, these kind of moments highlight the fact that Refugian's style of storytelling is masterclass. That while every other isekai that is full of harems and people openly accept, because Mishoko Tensei connects so well and is so believable, the idea of Rudius having a harem upsets people, angers them. Despite it being fiction, it produces anger and outrage. That's a sign of how good he is at capturing an audience. Still, beyond all these moments, Rudius is shaped by his mistakes, shaped by his regrets, shaped by his loved ones, and growing more and more by the day. Not that he's perfect or ever will be or will end world hunger, but that he accepts his stains and attempts to walk a better path. That's more than anyone would want for themselves. Not giving up because they tread nasty waters, but grow and grow. But yes, Rudius himself isn't all that makes this series so great. Every character in this series has life breathed into them just as much as Rudius. A large cast of characters that, while the anime doesn't do justice and often skips content for, all have their flaws, weaknesses, struggles, imperfections, and values. 
we see seen Elise's broken states of regrets and fears explode before Ruiz's wedding. The acceptance of Cliff and the resolve to save his wife. Zenoba's push to be an asset to his friend, shielding him from death and constantly doing his best to be at his side. We even had a brief Papa Reserve moment. The father with a tragic past being there once again to another person be a father figure in Norn, even offering a warrior's perspective to Rudius and his fallout with Edis. Lilia's flaws in raising her own child, yet still accepting her, putting aside her own grievances to help Rudius in his worst moment. The list goes on and on. I can make entire hour-long videos for every single character. The depth in every character is truly remarkable. And again, their flaws are what make them so great. But yes, sadly, like I said earlier, the side characters do highlight the anime adaptation's weakness. It's an adaptation. Will I call it a perfect adaptation? Not quite, nor that I really expect it to be. There's always things that get cut whenever something is adapted. Being someone who read the source material up to this point, there's still a lot missing in context and depth. Side chapters with Cliff and Norn, Elise shielding and protecting and standing up for Rudius on the bigger continent. World building aspects like spells, mechanics, cultures that are in the light novel series. Still, season two, part two seen a massive improvement over the first part, handling each point of storytelling better than it previously did. And honestly, that's the best I could ask, considering they only have so many episodes to work with. Additionally, I commend the team in keeping Refugion constantly involved, assuring the fans that if any changes are made, which yes, we've seen some big ones here recently, is to the vision the author had, which for me honestly destroys any desire to be upset about any changes or cut content. Equally, visually, directing wise, I seen the same improvement. Gone is the constant flat shots from the first core, while still not to the standards of season one, part two has some incredible animation pieces. By far, the Hydra was an incredible segment. Well, yes, they used a lot of CGI for a lot of the shots, but the team did a great job of blending it to let it match the style. Additionally, overall, just a lot of the perspective shots were really well done. Now, Hoshi's breakdown, my gosh, Norn's just cries of sorrow, impact shots that highlight grief and self-reflection. The importance of perfectly framed shots can do wonders whenever you can't have dialogue over it. There's a lot of show don't tell that can be done with perspective shots. Despite the fact that you don't have the character talking about what's going on, simply showing something that symbolizes something can make a big difference. And they did that with this new core, I feel. It gives me a lot of hope for this series going forward, that they're kind of steering back in the right direction for the future adaptation. Mushoku Tensei continues to be one of the greatest anime of all time. Not because it's an isekai, not because it's a fantasy, not because of anything else, but for what it does. Countless times throughout the series, I found myself reflecting on my own experiences. I cried my eyes out seeing Paul's fading face, recalling the final moments of my own father's life. I cried my eyes out seeing Zenith's blank expression, reflecting on my own experience with dementia. I was pained to see Nanahoshi's weakened state and the outburst and grieved alongside the family over the announcement of Paul's death and Zenith's state. Very few series captures my emotions like this series does. It's in relatability empathy, and strong development that it does. Refugion's characters and realized world is a cut above so many other franchises. Introducing a cast of characters with depth, tackling tough subjects that make you think, and pushing the envelope on storytelling and mental trauma and producing healing. Mushoku Tensei, while something unacceptable to grandstanding purists, unable to air out their own skeletons in their closet, is something special to those willing to accept their own stains and move on. Or, again, except those currently struggling with their own sins. Mushoku Tensei is a piece of storytelling that should be accepted, should exist, and I'm happy it exists.